Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Do you feel blessed before you answer that? I know you were all going to answer right away. Before you answer that, let me just say a few things about being blessed. Or, as we say in the church, blessed. Right? Because that's, that's, that's a long-standing thing. When do you say blessed and when do you say blessed? It's kind of a church thing, right? Good on you for reading that the, the Bible way is blessed. But if you asked your next door neighbor if they were feeling blessed today, <laughs> they would probably wonder what you were asking them. Um, but they would probably say, sure, in the same way that you might say, fine. Right? There's all sorts of reasons why, and unfortunately, they're the ones that tend to trump the reasons why you would say the truth. There are all sorts of reasons why we don't say it, or why we're more than happy to say sure and walk away. There's lots of reasons. And right now, if you've been reading the news, there's a big load of reasons. I imagine that if I were to ask if you feel blessed, there's probably still people who would say yes. There's probably still people who would say yes because yes they do. There's also probably people who would say yes because the minister is asking me if I feel blessed. It's a trick question. <laughs> Yes is the right answer. Oh, wait, we just read the Beatitudes. Yes. So, yes, 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 I feel... Not really. You might, you might absolutely feel blessed. You might absolutely... But right now, there's lots of reasons why people don't feel blessed at all. And here's the thing about that, is that usually, that's not because we don't feel blessed. It's because we look at other people and go, Wow, I must be blessed, because look, look, look what's happened to those people. They're certainly not blessed. There's lots of reasons to wonder. Um, every, every time I like to read the news every morning, and every time I I open the page on the internet because you know who reads papers, right? Um, every time I look at it, I oh my goodness. There's lots of reasons. Lots of reasons. Um, by the way, that's all the more reason why you should ask somebody if they feel blessed. Uh, I have a colleague, by the way, uh, who, uh, and this is a big problem for me, it's a birthday issue, uh, it's a big problem, because you know how on Facebook, because I know you're all on Facebook, you know how on Facebook it tells you when somebody's birthday's coming out, and so you can wish them a happy birthday on Facebook, which is really great for me, because I have trouble remembering my own, um, but I have a colleague who really, really, really hates it when people say things like, may the year ahead be full of blessings, because you are blessed. There's no such thing as independent. You are blessed. You just are. And I go, while that may be true, it's probably all the more reason why you need to remind people. And my problem with that is, I don't remember who it is. And when I wish people happy birthday, I almost invariably say, may the year ahead be full of blessings, or may the year be blessed. And I don't remember that. <laughs> and that's a problem.
them because I'm sure they're going to read that and go, uh-huh, well, there's a blessing right there. Because that's, the that's the other problem with the expression, too, isn't it? Unless you say it the right way, <coughs> blessed, people assume you mean it in that sort of nice, friendly, wishing somebody a happy birthday kind of way. Oh, and, you know, it's like, like my, my children are a blessing to me. Or, or I have friends, that's a blessing. Or, you know, last night for supper I had such, and I put a picture of it on Facebook, and that's such a blessing to be able to. We use the word in so many different ways now, and I'm not saying those things aren't blessings, by the way. The children are especially definitely blessings. But I'm, and the food too. But I'm not saying those aren't blessings. It's like asking somebody how they are. We use it as a greeting. We don't really either expect them or, for that matter, sometimes want them to answer. We just, it's a way of saying hi. It's, it's become so useless. That's how we use it. And blessings kind of become that way too. I think there's two reasons for that. One is that we, we start going, uh, well, I'm supposed to be blessed, so I guess everything's a blessing. Or we look at other people and go, wow, their life is worse than mine. That's for darn sure. <coughs> Um, and if their life is better, then I guess we're not blessed. Like, it's all comparative, right? It's not, by the way. I'll come to that in a minute. But we, that's how we can use it. Um, it. It becomes a way of comparing our lives to other people's lives. And it's not. Sometimes we use it to mean the smallest little insignificant thing, and sometimes it means a huge thing, and we can get really easily confused about how is that a blessing when that's a blessing. Well, the good news is those are all blessings in their own way. Because, as it happens, my colleague is right. We are blessed. And that's, I think, some of the issue that we have around hearing the Beatitudes. It, they're just, they're wonderful, aren't they? And if only we could be like that. Because clearly Jesus is teaching us that if we are like that, we will be blessed as if somehow we're not, unless we're in that list. <coughs> or, if we are on that list, we should feel lucky because we're blessed. Uh, I think another thing, by the way, that people writing the Gospel stories did, was not only did they not just include highlights, so they left out a lot of stuff, um, I think they edited. Because I can't imagine, I can't imagine Jesus would have used such a short list. Because here's, here's, what, here's what I think happened in, in this story. I think uh, Jesus was just beginning his, his ministry, and he was going out, and he was, he was teaching, he was healing, he was doing miracles and all that stuff, the cool stuff that's in the Bible that we talk about. Um, and he was starting to realize right away that, oh, my goodness, there's a lot of work to do. And so this is, this is the part of Matthew's Gospel that we call the Sermon on the Mount, because it begins with, Jesus looked around and saw the people, and so he went up the mountain and sat down and began to talk to them. I, I interpret that as meaning Jesus was surrounded by a crowd, as he would be usually, um, and so he stood on high ground, like a soapbox, say, and started to talk to people so that everyone could hear. And I think what he did was he got up there and he looked around and he went, oh, all these people who look like they're not having the best lives ever. I think he looked around and he, he wasn't thinking, I should teach them how to be. He was looking at them and going, I see what they are. I see how they are. I've talked to them. I've heard them tell me how they're feeling. They need to know something really important. That's why they all begin with, blessed are you. None of, them, none of them begin with, you will be blessed if, because, <laughs> they all begin, blessed are you. He looked around and he went, oh, okay, I see people who are mourning. Blessed are you because. And he looked around and he saw other people, people who were having, struggling, and things weren't happening in their lives, people who were persecuted, people who just not having the best time ever needed to know. 
they were blessed. Because they are. And each of the things, that, the ways that people are blessed, they're all about connecting to God in some way. Whether it's about heaven or earth, it's all about people being closer to God. Blessed are you because you are blessed with God's presence. You are not alone ever. And there's two ways you know that you're not alone. One is to know that God is present in your life. Even if you are literally alone, you are still in the presence of God. And God is in the presence of you. We don't often think of it both ways, do we? You're also in the presence of God because of all of those ways that people will reach out to you. All of those ways that people will try to show you that you're blessed at the time of your life when you least want to know that. Right? When we're struggling, when things are not going well, <coughs> and someone says to us, you're blessed. Don't you want to punch them? <laughs> you can say yes because yes you do. The last thing you want to know when you are struggling is that you're blessed. Because what, how could I possibly, look at what's happening, how could I possibly be blessed? And, and the thing is, we, we, we don't see how we're blessed. And one of the ways that we are blessed is in that moment, someone is asked, telling you you're blessed. There is someone there. Someone who hopefully you can talk to, hopefully you can share with. Somebody who might be able to help you. Somebody who's reaching out a hand. <coughs> That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's the thing about being, being blessed and doing the blessed, blessed in. Wait. The blessing part. We're not just blessed in what we receive. We're blessed in what we give. And what we give is presence. What we give is an opportunity for people to experience God's presence through us. That's how we bless others. I had a, what we, um, can, can I see the, can I see the, the face palm, please? Have you seen this? I saw this the other day. Um, if you follow uh, Christian Sarah, we miss our attention. <laughs> this is a big deal right now. Because think of, think of all of the people, think of all of the people who routinely quote Leviticus, to support their view of certain things that may be not particularly, in their opinion, either right or moral. They use Leviticus to do that. And the thing about Leviticus is Leviticus was the, the laws and the rules given to a people who were just all over the place and they needed something to help focus them. And there's lots of things in Leviticus. Uh, there are lots of things in Leviticus that were very meaningful at the time that aren't now. <laughs> like uh, stoning your neighbor if they work on a Sunday. If you're a farmer, that might be a little bit of an issue. <laughs> right? Or the, the business, but you know them all, right? There's a business of the, the you can't wear uh, clothing made of different kinds of uh, thread and fabric and stuff. You know, there's things like that. Uh, my personal favorite is the, the, the one, I don't know if you saw this, but it's the person who had a tattoo that says, that quotes the verse in Leviticus that people usually quote to support the view that um, homosexuality is wrong. It was tattooed on their arm. By the way, there is a verse in Leviticus that prohibits you from putting tattoos on your body. <laughs> really? <coughs> and then along comes this Jesus who, remember last week we were talking about prayer? Why would they ask Jesus to pray? To teach them, the disciples how to pray? Because they sense there's something new here. Here's something new. Blessed are you. The list should have been so much longer. And it, it should have included, blessed are you who are happy with your life and enjoy every moment of your existence. And then blessed are you who are on the other end of that, that spectrum and everyone in between, because you are. None of the Beatitudes begin with, you could be if only you would do this. They all begin with, you are blessed. 
Instead of telling people what's wrong with them, maybe we should start telling them how they're blessed. In fact, if you're going to use the word blessed or blessed in common use every day, use it that way. When somebody tries to say something bad about someone else or criticize somebody else, tell them how they're blessed. And by the way, one of the ways that they're blessed is that they get to express that opinion, but they are blessed. It is so hard for us to hear sometimes, and so easy for us to hear at other times, that we're blessed. When good things are happening, we're blessed. When bad things are happening, we are not. We are struggling. And right now, we're doing a lot of struggling. You are blessed. Whether you're specifically on the list in the Beatitudes, or whether you would like to rewrite them and add a few things, feel free, by the way, because I think Jesus would too. There'd be a whole lot of people who'd be on that list today that Jesus would be reminding them, you are blessed. And you are blessed by God's presence in your life. You may not see it right now, but yes, you are. You are blessed. Just as importantly, go and be a blessing to other people. Because you can be. In fact, Jesus' whole life is about that. I know it would not make for a good movie, let alone a good story, but I truly have a feeling that the biggest part of Jesus' ministry had nothing to do with miracles and healing and stuff like that. It had to do with sitting down with people, probably over, say, a potluck lunch. Sitting down with people and talking to them, and most importantly, listening to what they had to say. That's the greatest ministry we can do. Because when we listen to people, we want to not only, not only to give them the opportunity to be heard, it also helps us understand how important the action is going to be that's going to follow that. So it's not just listening and walking away. We are, we are literally infected with their concerns, and we want to make things different. We want to make sure that not only does everyone feel blessed, they feel blessed because their life is truly a blessing. Blessed are you.